Good morning. Good morning. It's Monday morning. It's actually Saturday morning. Uh, well, yeah, but nobody's going to see this until Monday, Monday morning. morning. So happy Monday morning. We hope you've had a great weekend. <laughs> yes. We are away from home and unable to do our live Port of Parsonage prayer time this morning. It's odd because we are in the same place, but in different spots and and working with the the wi-fi and trying to do this and and uh, coordinate our being together is not a simple thing yeah yeah and we will also have had some late nights and mm -hmm. and being up and adam at five and able to to get to where we need to be next <laughs> is virtually impossible so here we are pre-recorded but you know i believe prayer is prayer and, yes, and, and powerful. Yes, and if we can encourage you to be in prayer this morning, that's what we want to do. I am Pastor Jenny. And I'm Pastor Dave. And we are the, the Port of Parsonage, Parsonage ministering, ministering where, where you, you are, are, professing our hope. And encouraging you. We're reading this morning from Jeremiah, chapter 32, verses 1 through 3 and 6 through 15. Jeremiah received the Lord's word in the tenth year of Judah's king Zedekiah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar's rule. At that time, the army of the Babylonian king had surrounded Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined to the prison quarters in the palace of Judah's king. Judah's king Zedekiah had Jeremiah sent there after questioning him. Jeremiah said, The Lord's word came to me. Your cousin, Hanamel, Shalom's son, is on his way to see you, and when he arrives, he will tell you, Buy my field in Anathoth, for by law you are next in line to purchase it. And just as the Lord had said, my cousin, Hanamel, showed up at the prison quarters and told me, Buy my field in Anatoth in the land of Benjamin, for you are next in line and, and have a family obligation to purchase it. Then I was sure this was the Lord's doing. So I bought the field in Anatoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out for him 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, had it witnessed, and weighed out the silver on the scales. Then I took the deed of purchase, the sealed copy, with its terms and conditions, and the unsealed copy, and gave it to Baruch, Neriah's son, and Maseah's grandson, before my cousin Hanamel and the witnesses named in the deed, as well as before all the Judeans who were present in the prison quarters. I charged Baruch before all of them. The Lord of heavenly forces, the God of Israel, proclaims, Take these documents, this sealed deed of purchase along with the unsealed one, and put them into a clay container so they will last a long time. The Lord of heavenly forces, the God of Israel, proclaims, Houses, fields, and vineyards will again be bought in this land. After I had given the documents to Baruch, Neriah's son, I prayed to the Lord. And there we go. I feel like you stopped in the middle of a sentence. I did. Oh, all right. So I, I went I went too far. Oh, okay. I was reading the, the wrong number of text. Okay. Okay. So we get this field mm -hmm. that's been purchased. What's the point? Well, the point is that, that while Israel was about to go off into exile, there was going to be a time when they would come back yeah. and land would be, would be bought and sold and, and things would get back to uh, what God had intended with the remnant. Yeah, yeah. There's hope. It gives, it gives that, that hope for a future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and we too have that hope, though though this um, doesn't speak directly to us in terms of of a return to Israel to 
to buy a plot of land at all. It, it, it gives us the hope that God is going to uh, restore all things. Right, right. It, it, you know, we, we, we read things in the Old Testament that are direct um, prophecy or reflection of what, what is to come. And then we read other things in the Old Testament that gives us a foundation so we can understand what's happening in the New Testament. Here we read things as a, um, it's kind of a foreshadow of, mm -hmm. of what is to come, but it helps us to understand too who Israel was, right. where they had lost, you know, that, that whole idea that, that um, Jerusalem would no longer be, that it was destroyed and that they weren't in Jerusalem. Well, that's where they worshiped God. Right. And if they can't be in Jerusalem, is the worship of God over? Right. And, and that was what they were thinking. Right. Uh, that right. If they couldn't worship at the temple, then they couldn't worship. Right. And all was lost. Right. But there is but there is hope. Mm -hmm. And and as we see things in our world today, I think we can gain that same level of hope that yeah, we we are still worshiping. Yeah, we still we still have that relationship with God. We still have that relationship through Jesus Christ, and uh, and that gives us hope. Lord, we thank you for any any hope mm. in our world today. Um, I can't imagine what it was like to be Israel back then, and um, to feel like everything is just lost. Yeah. Um, but we do we do look at our world today and we just wonder sometimes what's happening. Um, so Lord, we thank you for that hope. Lord, I pray for hope for those who feel that there is none. Um, mm -hmm. And and I know that we have have that kind of people in our cities. Uh, we have them among the the, the homeless. I think we have them among regular people in the community who have homes and they look I think at, so. at the situation and, and they don't have, they don't seem, some of them, to have hope for these people, that, that, that life would turn around for them. And, uh, and so there, there is a, a hopelessness that's going around out there. Uh, mm -hmm. Not just related to homeless, um, but so many other things. There are folks who are dealing with health issues, yeah, and, yeah, and uh, other circumstances of life that uh, just seem hopeless. And maybe life itself isn't hopeless, but areas of life mm -hmm. for individuals. Can, I had can somebody be. say to me the other day, "Well, I want you know that everybody else seems to have it so together." You know, and I feel like I'm falling apart. And I said, but keep in mind that just because on the outside they look good <laughs> doesn't mean that what's going on on the inside is is not in turmoil. So so don't judge yourself by everybody else. Right. Yeah. Right. Lord, we pray for those who um, who don't have hope in eternity. Mm. Um mm who just don't know what's to come, who just don't believe, who are still lost. And Lord, we pray that we would um, be part of your plan for their salvation. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We are grateful, Lord, that you are the hope of the world. Yes, yes. And, and in that, the church, the local church, is the hope of the world because... Uh, because you are in the church, mm -hmm. you are active among us and uh, calling out to all people. We know that your heart, your longing is for that all to come to a knowledge of you, yeah. a saving knowledge of you. Mm. Lord, I want to pray for those who on the mo morning that this airs on Monday... Uh, for those who are dealing with health situations and have 
just just an unknown future because of a unexpected mm. health mm. situation or a long term health situation. Um, Lord, I, I pray for your peace yes. right right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That that peace would be be evident. And Lord, I I pray for this at six o'clock on Saturday morning. Hmm. as well as 5 o'clock on Monday morning when yeah. others will join us in prayer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, we pray, Lord, for your healing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we're, we thank you because you are going to do these things. You are going to touch people. You are going to bring healing. Uh, you are doing that right now, mm-hmm. and and um, in the midst of those healing touches, people will come to know who you are, that you are the God of all things, the God of all, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank mm-hmm. you, Lord. Lord, I, I pray for those who are struggling with Just circumstances in life that seem impossible, that mm-hmm. really need to be fixed, but they seem impossible. Mm-hmm. And and for those who don't know how to fix the circumstances within their lives, Lord, I pray that you would send the right person with the right words to say, I, I can help, mm-hmm. or yes. have you considered this, or there's this organization that can help, something. Um, Lord, send help. Yes. Send help. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, mm. We know, Lord, that um, we ourselves have have uh, things in life that come our way that, that we just don't know what to do with. Mm-hmm. Um, we have circumstances that, you know, anytime, anytime that People interact, circumstances arise, and some of them are beyond our our control. Right. Help us, Lord, though, uh, to to be in control of our own responses, to be responsive yeah. instead of reactive, reactive, and and to manage ourselves well uh, in the discipline of the Lord. Mm-hmm. That, that people may see, uh, you know, and, and, we, and you're right, we don't always have everything all together. But if we've got Jesus, we got a great start. We do. We got know? that foundation. And, and, and Lord, that's our prayer, that people mm-hmm. might see you in others. And, and that we might see you in those who are struggling and having difficulties of any number of, of kinds and, and that we see the, the image of God in them, that we may treat them with grace and dignity, mm-hmm. mm. that we may love them. Yes, <laughs> yes. I pray, Lord, for those who are starting this new week and um, have have a whole work week ahead of them or a whole week of, of volunteering or whatever it is that they do. And, and I pray, Lord, mm. for those divine appointments within this week. I pray that you would help us to see those divine appointments when they happen and not just brush them off as a interruption or uh, just something that gets in the way. Um, may we see those divine appointments and may we, may we recognize that they are from you. May we respond as Jesus would respond in yes. those situations. Yes. And may we, Lord, as we, as we go through our day with our own plans, be open to uh, those moments that others cross our paths. Open to what you have, what you have purposed in those encounters. Yeah. Um, as we are in close proximity with them, may we find a way uh, to to touch them in 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 a way that that honors them and and 
uh, make helps them to see Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, if you happen to have joined us for the first time, normally we are live and we've got the chat going and and we enjoy some interaction with our other prayer partners. Um, But we are away and this is pre-recorded. Tomorrow, Tuesday, will be pre-recorded as well and then we will be back with you on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So we hope we have encouraged you today and we will see you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.